Okay, we're now being joined by Matt Mitrion. Kevin, your line is now live. Hey, Matt. Welcome back. Thanks for having us. Listen, you know, you're 0 and 5. Well, in your last couple of fights, you know, it's not looking. That's how you're going to start out this interview, asking that kind of shit? All right, let me, let, me put my, let me put my asshole hat on real quick. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. Fuck this. Let's go. Don't apologize for shit. That's how you're going to start it off. Let's go. Come on. All right, listen, I, I, I'm sorry. It's just. No, no, don't apologize for shit. That's how you want to do it. So fuck it. Let's go. Come on, let's go. All right. I'm 0 and 5. Oh. Let's go. All right. So listen, with this fight, uh, you know, a lot of people are looking at this as, you know, go home, go big or go home. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. What, how are you going to silence the haters and the doubters then? Does anything in you think I give a single fuck what a hater or a doubter thinks? First of all. Second of all, I fought the best in the world and beat most of them. So I really don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks, period. All right, so listen, going into this fight, how are you looking to finish it? I throw hands, son, that's what I do. All right, thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. Santiago, your line is now live. Hi, Matt, greetings from Amsterdam and thank you for the time. How What's are you up, doing? Brother? I'm great, how are you man, doing? yourself? I'm doing so great. Thank you. How are you experiencing this fight week thus far at the Mohegan Sun Arena? It's been pretty dull, brother. We've been uh, in a room hanging out, not doing too much, but we get some workout time in, so that's kind of nice. Matt, there is an interim title in the Bellator heavyweight division right now, but to me, it's quite unsure what this belt means because the champion could be busy till the summer of next year. What do you make of the heavyweight division in Bellator right now? And do you think this interim title could maybe be defended at some point? Well, I'll tell you what, my Dutch friend... I don't really care about that. It's way above my pay grade. And I've, I've just pointed out, I'm 0-5. So my opinion on any type of interim title doesn't really mean that much. Matt, you are having such an amazing career with finishes over Fedor and, of course, Derek Lewis, who is going to fight for the title next month. You've seen it all and you've done it all. But if a young fighter comes up to you and tells you he wants to become a world-class fighter like you, what advice would you give him? That's interesting. Um, there's a couple of points that I would have to point out. I would say, make sure you're well-rounded. The, the days of being a, a, a one trick pony are over. I would also say, make sure you take really good care of your body. Get your time in when you're young um, and you're fresh, but remember you don't get paid in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the training room. You get paid on the, on the, on the underneath the, the shining lights. So be cognizant of what the beatings you take and how much you take. So make sure you can prolong your career. And probably the third part is be smart about who you keep around. Take care of yourself. Make sure that those around you take care of you and share the same interest. Max Milano, your line is now live. Hi, Matt. Here is Max Morales from MMA Pit. And you, you've been in, at the biggest stage. You know? you, you've developed yourself in the UFC, and now you're, you're in Bellator. And your opponent, Tyrell, has been his whole career has been in Bellator, so so what what's the difference you see between you and him uh, speaking at at experience wise, and um, well, it, it will get. That... Go ahead. I'm sorry, buddy. Finish no, it. go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Well, I, I think that there is a very significant difference in the experiences of, of my fighting versus Tyrell's fighting, but Tyrell was on. Uh, a, a very large collegiate stage and an international stage for a bit uh, in wrestling. So I think that he's very familiar with um, high pressure situations, performing, uh, and I think that uh, he can draw a lot of similarities between the two. Nicole Suarez. Matt, thank you for this time. Yeah. You know, in a sport as physically demanding as MMA, you have mm. fought at least once, if not more, every year since your pro debut in 2009. Yeah, I is fought in three decades, man. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Is there anything specific in your preparation for fights that has allowed you to be as active as you've been? Yes, I don't spar with big gloves on. I don't spar heavy. I don't get punched in the face unless there's money on the line. Thank you. Mills, your line is now live. Hey, how's it going, Matt? This is uh, MMA Locker Room, part of Pub Sports Radio. I just want to give you some respect, man. I mean, wins over Kimbo Slice, RIP. Wins over Derek Lewis's Fatal Amiranko? Come on now. I got a little song for you. It's called Don't Count Me Out, because when you count me in, that's when I'm coming to win. 
So tell us why you're going to win this Friday, man, because I got money on you as the underdog in here. Well, first of all, if I'm an underdog, that's a hell of a bet. Second of all, uh, I'm a different animal, man. Uh, everybody thinks they've seen it until they actually get to feel it. And that's a different kind of response when you see the jab coming back after touching your face versus going out. Paul, your line is now live. Hi, Paul Casanova, EDF Sports. Um, you touched on the fact that uh, Fortune's a wrestler, and I just want to know, what do you think are your advantages in this fight? Would it be that jab? Athleticism, jab, creativity, awkward. Thank you. Yep. All right, Matt, that was the last one. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.